Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. In this video, we're going to be discussing a ton of stuff for AMD. Not only the pricing targets for the 5800X 3D, but also next generation CPUs such as the 7000 series, the Ryzen 7000 series, RDNA 3, and perhaps most important of all, AMD's ability to fill the demand that we will have for those products. Now, if you've missed it, AMD's earnings report is currently available. And the bottom line for the report is that it's pretty good. Basically, earnings are absolutely through the stratosphere for AMD at the moment. And it's not really surprising given the demand not only for us as you know gamers and regular customers for CPUs like the 5950X or GPUs such as the 6800 uh, XT, but you know, HPC demands for the Epic CPUs have been absolutely astronomical. And obviously one of the things is when you have like, you know, a server farm actually purchasing these processors, you're not just having them buy one or two like we might if we have, let's say, even a prosumer build like one of the high-end Threadripper processors, for example. They actually need hundreds, if not thousands, of these CPUs. So obviously AMD at the moment are making money hand over fist. I've never actually understood that saying, but whatever. And now Lisa Sue is affirming that we will actually be certainly seeing not only Zen 4, but also RDNA 3 launch this year. Now put a pin on that because we'll be coming back to it. But just as important, uh, I mentioned this a moment ago, is the ability for AMD to actually deliver on these products. Because, you know, we've seen a ton of paper launches over the past 12 months. And, you know, in some cases, it's not really been that they're paper launches, quote unquote. It's just that the demand is so much that they just sell out. So if you weren't either really lucky for the launch window or you're willing to pay a scalper, essentially, you might as well say it's a paper launch. Now... The good news is for those who are not mining is that cryptocurrencies at the moment are not as profitable as they once were, and that's putting it mildly. Plus, of course, other events such as uh, Ethereum, excuse me, turning to proof of stake. But outside of all of that, AMD themselves are taking preventative measures, and Lisa, Lisa Sue, has said that the company have now been working for several quarters to not only procure more manufacturing capacity from TSMC, which is obviously who are producing all of AMD silicon, essentially. Uh, RDNA 3, for example, is gonna be built on not only the 5, but also the 6NM process from the company. But further to that, they are also working on securing other things. And this would include, but not be limited to, things such as substrate. And also, you know, it's like, it's very easy to say stuff like, oh, you know, TSMC's manufacturing capacity is what's holding things back. But there's a crap ton of things that have been holding things back, like everything from memory chips, which, again, does kind of come back to capacity in some degree, but also substrate and just... Pretty much everything in the supply chain has been squeezing uh, companies. There's a reason, for example, that Sony have cut the forecast for their number of PlayStation 5s, and they haven't sold as many uh, PlayStation 5s as well as perhaps they had hoped. And it's quite simply because just throughout the supply chain, they are getting kicked in the shin. So AMD have basically said that this is not going to be so much of a problem coming throughout this year and that's obviously something that we ourselves have mentioned several times on the channel at the moment that all of my sources have been basically saying that yeah coming into the early part of this year it's not going to be great but as we move throughout the year especially as we start to get ready for RTX 40 launch from Nvidia and also RDNA 3, Zen 4 and other products it's going to get much healthier which is obviously a really good thing because as I've said a hundred times at this point I love covering products for you guys and it's fun and all but it's also kind of frustrating for me like I recently did an RTX 3050 review and it's a great GPU like I do personally believe it should have been a bit faster which is pretty much what I said in the review it doesn't do anything exciting but it's pretty good especially ironically enough compared to something like the 6500 XT from AMD which I think is a bit of a a bit of a letdown but ultimately it's like I can't get ultra excited about the review sometimes because I just don't know if you guys can buy it. And it kind of sucks. 
And this brings me to some of my own information. And I want to start perhaps out with the least interesting, and that concerns the 5800X 3D. If you've missed what this is, if you've been living under a rock, it's basically an 8-core Zen CPU, and Zen 3 CPU to be clear, which basically has a crap ton of additional cache and an extra 64 megabytes bolted on top. And yeah, I mean, the architecture is basically identical. And of course, AMD themselves have been discussing this ad nauseum recently. And honestly, it's a really impressive processor and really does show the benefits of additional cache for the Zen architecture. IPC gains in games have been pretty impressive. And AMD basically have said, of course, that this processor, um, you know, what the release date window is and all this other stuff. But they haven't really mentioned so much about pricing targets. What is quite interesting from the company is they have kind of alluded to the fact that the stacking technology for this is kind of expensive. And that's one of the reasons that they are not going for higher core count variants, such as, for example, the 5950X is also manufacturing woes as well. Um, so basically, what is the price target for this? Now, I don't have a to the dollar price. And obviously, at the end of the day, things can change before release. But unfortunately, I am hearing that these CPUs are going to be pretty expensive. I'm told that it's possibly going to be just a little bit cheaper than Intel's i9-12900K. Now, again, I want to stress that these CPUs predominantly by AMD, you can even see that in the way that they're marketing this with showing like game you know, game performance, they basically want these to be the, the processors that gamers themselves want. Now, I think these CPUs are going to be really cool. And I suspect that if you've got the abundance of cash, particularly it's going to be on an AM4 socket, it could be really good. You know, it could be a last hurrah, if you will, for those who have an AM4 board, especially if AMD even released or allow the release of BIOSes, which would support older boards as well, uh, such as it would be brilliant if they worked on 300 series boards, but I'm not going to hold my breath on that. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, obviously these things are still going to be refreshed with like a 12900K or even one of the higher core count variants of Zen 3. Um, I'm hoping that they're not as expensive as what I've been hearing, but uh, yeah, uh, uh, several sources have told me that, you know, just kind of expect the pain. So um, yeah, I given the release date, I suspect a lot of folks are just going to wait for Zen 4. And this brings me actually to Zen 4 and RDNA 3. Now, AMD, again, to reaffirm, have said that they will release this year, but they have not mentioning actual release dates. And I'm hearing it's going to most likely be late Q3, but probably instead it's going to be Q4, depending on the product. And I mean... <sighs> Kind of to circle back to the discussion I was having yesterday about the RDNA 2 refresh, those are still going to be on the 7nm process. I've actually had yet another source reach out to me and tell me that this is the case, and this is coming back from when I was originally told that it was going to be 6nm, but apparently no, they are going to be on the 7nm process, as Grayman yesterday was saying, and now I've had two sources tell me the same thing, so I'm probably going to say that that's true. Either way, doesn't matter. A, Grayman was first on that information, and B... Um, it's not going to be that much after we see RDNA 2 launch, well, the refresh of RDNA 2, the RDNA 3 uh, comes out. But we also have Zen 4, and um, Zen 4 is looking to be absolutely ridiculous. I'm actually told that while the desktop processors are very impressive, like they are really impressive, perhaps... <sighs> You know, it, it, I don't know how to describe this, but perhaps you might actually be more impressed with the leaps in mobile. And, you know, we've discussed core counts on mobile and all of that stuff previously, but allegedly it's really good what they have, what, what's going on with the mobile architectures. But the release date, I'm being told, for the mobile SKUs for Zen 4 is apparently going to possibly be early next year. Uh, one of the targets I was told is CES, but it's also possible it could slip a little bit. Um, and I think that, honestly... It's going to be a very curious time in the market when Zen 4 launches. I'll be very interested to see what the marketing around um, AMD's uh, 
well, just generally just AMD's marketing approach and also the prices and what SKUs get launched first, I suspect that they're going to launch the higher core count variants first. And I'm still being told that there is a possibility that we're going to see higher core counts. Uh, so that's higher than 16 cores. Um, I'm still trying to do a bit of due diligence on that. So I'll probably put our video in a day or two to find out what I've, he what I've heard. But again, I've been told by uh, at least one to two people now that it's possible we could see higher than 24 cores for Zen 4, but then someone else has told me that this is not the case. This is probably for Zen 5. So I'm just going to leave that there for now while I do a bit more digging. But either way, um, you know, I suspect that we're going to see the higher core counts come out first. And then again, AMD will start to fill out their list a little later on of their SKUs. With that said, though, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, let me know. Um, I'm splitting up the video today into, well, a couple of videos because we also have a crap ton of uh, Intel information to go through. And I didn't want to put it all in one video because it starts to just become so unwieldy, even with timestamps for people. So let me know if you like this or not. We'll try it out for a bit. With that said, Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.